Good morning and hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our third episode of Rocket Talk Radio. Uh, today we're going to just touch on a subject, uh, something that um, I was hip to, uh, meeting uh, one of our guys here, Richard Garcia, who's not with us today. Uh, he's come down with something, so uh, we're just going to do a short show today. So he brought up the topic of uh, Robert Truax. And since I've done my research on Robert Truax, I literally fell in love with the guy. Not only because he was a genius, one of those people that kind of slipped through the popular cracks, uh, but he was also born on my birthday, September 3rd. So I'm really in love with the guy. Okay, so uh, this topic or this show is entitled Before SpaceX on Rocket Talk Radio. Today it's just myself, Alistair Martin, and Dave Nordling in the studio. Dave? Yes, good morning, Alistair. Good to have you, Dave. Good to be <laughs> Love having this guy here. It's full of knowledge, and he really gets the conversation going, and, uh, you know, he's just... He's just a, a library of information. So let's, uh, yeah. So what do you think about, um, well, I know you know quite a bit about, uh, about Robert Truax. Um, let's yeah. see what you got there. Well, uh, Robert Truax uh, started his career in the Navy. Uh, he, he enlisted in the 30s, and uh, he, he was a follower of Robert Goddard's work yes. in, in liquids. Mm -hmm. uh, he, Really start. He really started off at a great time. I mean, right before the Second World War, he convinced the Navy to continue uh, to study uh, rocketry. Yeah. And with with liquids, um, I'm not. A, I'm actually not that big of an expert on, on Robert Truax. Right, I right. think Richard is by far uh, more more knowledgeable. But his his name comes up quite often. The uh, his, his name comes up often in back before the internet in the he, in the sixties. Uh, Robert was with the Navy and then later with Aerojet right. in Sacramento, mm -hmm. leading their advanced programs. And then after about six or seven years at Aerojet, he left to form his own company in the mid-60s right. called Truax Engineering. And he remained there as a, as a consultant company. Right. Yeah. Uh, as, as, a, as a consultant. Uh, probably the, the one thing a lot of people might recognize Truax for was evil, was his connection to Evil Can Evil. Yes, that's right. I did read that about him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 an ama that's kind of an amazing story. And rocket cars. He was rocket. the first right. to, to put out a rocket car that beat the Australian record back in, I can't remember the date, but it was the, the early days of, uh, you know, um, rocket cars and desert racing and that sort of stuff. He was definitely a part of that. I, I wouldn't say that he was the first. I, I think I think Oberth in, in yeah. Germany. Uh, uh -huh. there, there was a, there was always a parallel effort to uh, to, the, to make rocket cars. Right, right. Um, sort of a niche uh, compared to the you know, flight vehicles. Right, right. And of course the military's early interest in rocketry was probably first in uh, either with sounding rockets and with uh, jet assisted takeoff. That's uh, right. With a JADO as, as the right. acronym is Spoken. Which Robert Truax pioneered? Yes, uh, liquid uh, JADO. Mm -hmm. Actually, most uh, JADO systems, if, if they are still used today, uh, they tip tend to be solid rocket motors. But uh, uh, Truax was an er was a proponent of the liquids uh, for their performance advantages. Although right. the complexity of a liquid rocket is much more, more so than the, with a solid. Right. So um, yeah, as uh, you know, I, like I said, I, when I fell in love with uh, Robert Truax, uh, I decided to go back into like his history, his childhood history, and stuff like that. Hey, he was definitely someone that was way ahead of his time. A lot of people um, don't know that he was actually one of the guys that uh, sort of actually put you know private space um, out there. He was one of the first guys that actually started building rockets in his backyard and, and, and talking about it like he's going to put satellites in space on his own. And uh, because he was ahead of, his, ahead of his time, a lot of people thought this guy was like crazy. Even though he had already proven himself in the Navy, uh, you know, with the, uh, the jet-assisted... Well, uh, jet-assisted takeoff, he was also one of the early, uh, one, of the, one of the early engineers in the uh, inter in the Intercontinental Ballistic mm -hmm. Missile That's Program, right. yeah. or the uh, 
I, the IRBM and the ICBM program mm -hmm. uh, launched after the Cold War ended. Right. Uh, and when uh, General Schreiber had a team of people put together, Robert Truex was on there. As a matter of fact, at LA Air, Air, Air Force Base, there are pictures on the wall with, with yeah. a young Robert Truex yeah. Uh, yeah. as a part of that cadre of, of engineers that they brought. Right. right. Uh, the Thor, uh, he had a he had a role in, in the Thor missile, mm -hmm. which is part of the which has a legacy going into the Delta series of rocket. Uh, Ending with the Delta II that right. flew yeah. la that flew last year mm. for the last time. Isn't that something? Even yeah. what he died in what 2010. Even up yes. till last year, we were still using this guy's engineering. Some of some of his work, I'm sure, yeah. was part of it. A lot yeah. of a lot of people uh, participated in of that. Course, General, of General Dynamics, uh, the good people at McDonnell Douglas, which now was rebranded under Boeing. You know what is now known as Boeing Huntington Beach. Right. Um, Rocketdyne also was a, the motor was a motor manufacturer for. Mm -hmm. uh, both for the Atlas and for the Delta, and they had a history with the MA3 and MA5. Right. right. Uh, but uh, Truex, Truex was part of that uh, initial team that, that advising the Air Force right. under uh, General Schreiber, even though Truex was Navy. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's actually, important that there was, a, there was an Air Force effort that was a Navy Air Force, absolutely. and Truex was very much on the Navy side. I believe they started, um, I, that one of the reasons why I think they started a Naval Air Force, or uh, grew the Naval Air Force was because, uh, well, of course, of World War II. And uh, yeah, he also uh, came up with the, the concept and the engineering behind the Polaris. Yes, the Polaris was one of it was one of his con was listed as one of his contributions. Right, right. The Polaris, the submarine launch ballistic missiles. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Truex was a big proponent of, of sea launch, of, of sea based launchers. Yeah, uh, he. And you know, during his early days, he actually wrote to Robert Goddard. Did oh, he you did? know that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was. He I did think, start out as a hobbyist. That, yeah, yeah I, I really need to read on his history a bit more. I, I'm gathering a lot of what I know from uh, the Wikipedia article, which which is excellent. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yes. And somebody Look really put a lot of care into it. A true for our listeners, a true X is spelled T R U A X. Right. Uh, he wrote. Uh, he wrote Robert Goddard, and you know. Uh, coincidentally enough, they ended up working together like, I don't know, that's, 20 or 30 years later. Right, that's right. Goddard's last, uh, Goddard passed away from throat cancer in 1945. Uh, Goddard was a professor, as we as we know, and mm -hmm. he wrote his seminal paper almost 100 years ago, uh, A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes in 1919, mm -hmm. uh, which would later culminate in his liquid, in his first uh, liquid rocket, in 19, uh, built in 1927. 20, 27, okay. And Truex was a hobbyist before he joined the Navy. And, yeah. and so that means that, you know, with God Goddard's work didn't go unnoticed. It was very much a hobby. Rockets were very much a hobby project. And, yeah. and a lot mm -hmm. of the uh, Reaction Research Society was was born out of that era because many uh, our, our founder George James uh, was a was a 14 year old boy in 1943 but surely, you know, the Everybody right, was right. Pay, everybody was paying attention to rockets, right? But in the United States, it was considered more of a hobby. It yeah, was considered it more of a hobby. Very seriously, yeah. Well, the, the Navy ultimately did. In, in the end, the, in the end, the Navy. Uh, uh, the because Navy, why? Well, be, because ro rockets were a power, <laughs> rockets were a powerful weapon. Uh, yeah. The ballistic missile really yeah. had no equal. That's right. The, the Nazis certainly recognized That's that, right. although they, they didn't implement it in large numbers, or at least not enough to turn the tide of the war. Not in time. No, uh, had we waited a little more, they probably would have. If the war would have lasted, lasted yeah, it a little have, longer, yeah. it would have been worse. Yeah, sure, yeah, but yeah. that no, thank God that didn't happen. But, yeah, we great, great, awesome. gratefully so. Not that there's a bad thing, but we all what? be speaking German right now. I, but it's okay. No, I don't think so. But. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, the point is, is that you're right. You're right. Truex was with Truex was enlisted in the Navy in, uh -huh. the, in the late 30s, and Goddard also uh, joined the joined the Navy. Not didn't join the Navy, but joined the Navy's research efforts right. in in the 40s up until he passed uh, until he died in 1945. So yeah, there there's a connection between Truex and Goddard, and, and certainly Truex Very was cool. a fan. Like a lot of us, a lot of us were a fan of Goddard's too. work, mm -hmm. even though Goddard um, Goddard was reclusive. Uh, I know that the, uh, uh, Frank Molina of JPL uh, was one of the few people that actually got to come over to New Mexico to directly interview with them, and he was and Goddard was very guarded, and he was very guarded just because he had endured a lot of criticism from he the did. press, yeah. uh, a lot of wrong-headed criticism from the press. It was it's funny to me that it was only on the eve of the 
manned moon landings, the, the New York Times see fit to apologize Indeed. for their for their error in criticizing Goddard during his time. Only it was only 24 years after the man had passed, but I guess it's late, always like that. Late yeah. better than never. It's always like that. But we're it? we're talking about Robert Truax. And, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. Robert uh, Robert's contribution, he really got in at the ground floor. Uh, got in at the ground floor mm -hmm. uh, through the birth of the intercontinental ballistic missile. Okay. And with the Navy, the Navy's had a, a large contribution to, to rocketry. Right, right. And leading on to him going solo, I'd really like to explore that in detail. Why, after leading uh, advanced programs at, at Aerojet, did he go on his own? But I suppose many, many, uh, many creative people do at some point. And so we're we're more familiar with Truax from his latter from his yeah, latter work. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I did read some more, uh, I, you know, I did read up a bit on, um, you know, why he decided or after he retired from the Navy. Um, you know, most people think, uh, and this is no criticism or anything, it's just, you know, to help make people aware that most people think that, uh, you know, Elon Musk was the inventor of private space and that sort of thing, you know, doing business in space or doing business for space as a private entity as opposed to government. Um, well, just so you know, uh, that it, that that's not the case, and hence is why this this show is entitled, or a part of this show, because this is going to be a short segment, uh, is entitled "Before SpaceX," because people like um, Robert Truax actually put forth the effort, took the initiative to attempt to privatize space. Uh, and when I say that, I mean literally build rockets in his backyard that <laughs> flew. I didn't fly him from his backyard, don't get me wrong, but he did build uh, vehicles that, that worked. Uh, and uh, he meant he was serious about making it uh, a, a business. Uh, that at the time, uh, I looked at some of those interviews that they did, some of those private interviews that they did, and the media was very limited during that time. Um, but the ones that I did catch, um, yeah, he was serious about turning this into a private, uh, into a private thing. And uh, many people thought he was crazy. Some people thought he would become a millionaire. And he could have, uh, but he was just ahead of his time, and it just didn't go that way. Um, but as you heard from Dave, we're still using technology that, um, or, that, that, uh, well, that he was there, a part of. There, there's a lot of legacy yeah. hard, hardware out there that's still, that's still being flown um, uh, through United Launch Alliance. Right, right. Through their uh, Atlas and Delta. Their, through what survives from Atlas and Delta. Right, right. Um, no, the, the the purpose of our show when we when you and I you and I and Richard had discussed uh, the this the series of before SpaceX, I I really wanted to seek to correct that misperception yes, yes. that that Elon Musk was the first to, to privatize space. No and, credit being taken away. By uh, no, absolutely no credit taken away. Uh, what it's let's let's be clear, you know, yes. SpaceX has fundamentally changed the game, Indeed. and and that is because they have been successful. They right. they have become a, a viable commercial contender in Indeed. the in the market as a whole, whereas Previous attempts to do so as a as a when we say private company, we also need to be clear right. that uh, Boeing and Lockheed are pro are publicly traded companies, and from the very beginning of the space age, uh, there has been private space. There, NASA does not build rockets. Let's they don't. Let, no, so they, just, do, they do not. So all, NASA, no, NASA, they con don't. NASA <laughs> has contractors. Yes. NASA has very smart people who oversee those contracts. NASA has test facilities, world-class testing facilities, and world-class engineers uh, behind them in their laboratories and their space centers. But private industries have been making rockets since the very beginning because right. uh, the experience is out there. NASA is out there to bring the industry along. And I think people's perception of that was, was rockets. That's, right. that's not true. Never has been true. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so as the, the, well, hopefully if you're watching this show, well, yeah, and you've picked up on that, well, now you know. So NASA doesn't build uh, vehicles for, or launch vehicles, so to speak. You have to be specific that uh, Na NASA, the, the U.S. government, our, our taxpayer dollars, right. go to, through NASA, and NASA makes selections, Indeed. and NASA, so in a sense, NASA, it's NASA's product. Right. Uh, no different than the Air Force uh, contracting with right. General Dynamics, Lockheed, and and uh, what would be in McDonnell Douglas, which mm -hmm. would become Boeing. Right. Um, 
they went. They also they also built, they also built rockets. The, these private companies built rockets for the Air Force. They they turn over the product, and it's the Air Force's product. Right. Same as it's NASA's product mm -hmm. that would take that would take men to the moon and would and would build the uh, shuttle. Of course. And so, you know, I, I think what Truex was trying to do was it was he was trying to make it more trying to get it out of being such a niche product that only the government would bring people to space. Right. And I think that's what people mean when they say, uh, you know, Elon is the first to privatize it. He, Elon, SpaceX tried to go on its own, tried to bring a, a vehicle from nothing with only, with only internal funding. Mm -hmm. And that's been very difficult to do. Even SpaceX has had to take uh, government, right. has had to take government money and right. and to make it. And but they have made a business of it. They did. They are they're launching. Their launch rates is is amazing. Right. And the recovery of the boosters is, is something that probably wouldn't have happened if that's it hadn't historic. been if, if it hadn't been pushed internally yeah. by SpaceX by somebody by somebody with vision. Uh, right. The government isn't always. I, I don't want to suggest that the government doesn't have vision. There are many smart people that have great ideas, and some of them don't just simply don't catch and. And as big as the government is, and as big as the industry that it feeds is, mm -hmm. there are lots of smart people. Guys like uh, Robert Truax also Indeed. was started with the Navy, uh, went into Aerojet, and then went on his own. Right. So in a, in a, in a sense, um, I think we, there's a lot to talk about in the show before SpaceX, just to give people a richer set, a richer sense of. Uh, where the industry has been, and yes, that, yes. although SpaceX is not unique, we should celebrate their Indeed. we should celebrate their contribution Indeed. in changing the industry. Indeed, um, just to cut uh, yeah, or to interject, um, I went to Joshua Tree last weekend with a really Excellent. cool bunch of people, and uh, you know we're all sitting around the bonfire just to tell a little story, and uh, you know one of my friends asked me, well, um, you know what's with the space shuttle? You know why did we cancel the program? And um, you know, I, I, I was I hope that I was able to answer that question accurately for him. Uh, I mean, in short, I basically told him the maintenance uh, cost uh, and the operational cost of the space shuttle uh, was more than the vehicle could actually deliver. Um, I'd like to, for you to again uh, get ex expand on that for me, please. Uh, please don't mistake anything I say for being expert opinion, but I, I think some of the things that I... More knowledgeable think, than me, that's for sure. I, <laughs> I just do my best like a lot of our listeners do. Yeah. We, we read, we, we pay attention because mm -hmm. it's a subject we're all fascinated with. Right. If you t turn the clock back to 1970, uh, Apollo was uh, Apollo was closing down. Production was actually stopping. They, yeah. they had built a limited number of vehicles because the, the push was to get men on the moon. Mm -hmm. And by 1970, Apollo 13 uh, had flown. Right. Uh, I think Apollo 14 was also went in the year 1970. Uh, please uh, check my facts on the internet. Right. <laughs> uh, but there was a sense in the agency that since the Russians were clearly not going to make it, then there was no point. I, I've often posited that if the Russians had landed even once on, on the moon, during the during the time during that time, then America would have never left. It would have it would, that have, is true. It would have it would have changed the game fundamentally. But because the Russians didn't succeed uh, with the N one program, which they they didn't uh, the Russian uh, the Soviets didn't even acknowledge uh, the program until after the end of the Cold War, um, it would it would it would ultimately spell doom for the for Apollo. So right, right. so if you go to nineteen seventy, you're look you're looking at what. What can what can NASA do after such a monumental accomplishment in just 11 years? Right. From their founding in 1958 to putting boots, American boots, in the lunar soil. Right. In 11 years, mm -hmm. it, it's nothing short of astounding. And and uh, coupled with that was the mil you know the military had had started rocketry for for the sake of protecting of our country against the threat against the very Russian. same people. Yeah. 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 Russian threat. Yeah. So Sputnik. I, I guess what I'm getting what I'm so, getting at is the shuttle was supposed to be that next great thing. Yes. Uh, a reusable vehicle. Uh, does it sound familiar? Of course right. it does. <laughs> yeah. Because the concept of reusable vehicles has been around for quite some time. Quite some time. Uh, it's it's gotten a bad reputation, probably largely because of the because of the shuttle. The shuttle was a noble yes. idea, but it turned out to be technically difficult to execute. I want to be corny for a second. Sure. But go ahead and finish. Well, I'm just saying that we, we all we all have seen uh, the legacy of the shuttle, and, and we Indeed. shouldn't and we shouldn't be smudged. You know, having semi regular access to orbit keeps us I mean, keeps us active. There were many 
milestone projects accomplished. It was a right. thirty year it was a thirty year program, but I think people are critical of the shuttle not because of what it stood for, but just because of how much resources it took so, to keep, to it, keep going. it. And so people are crit I think people are critical of the shuttle program because of what it because many things were the shuttle was done to the exclusion right. of other things. Could we have could we have spent our money in other areas? Should we have spent our money in other areas? I, I think that comes down to budget and, and that that very discussion is very relevant today, as, right. as the SLS is, is still pushing along. The, the vice president has said that he wants to put American boots back in lunar soil yeah, in five yeah. years. Uh, which, 2030 is what they're saying, I think. No, they're saying 2024. They're what, saying 20, five 20, years 20, from yeah. today. He's, nice. He's, uh, the, this, is, this is coming straight from the White House. Now, we can argue about, is that realistic? Is that even right. possible? Given the funding, I just want to I just want to have our listeners think about you know many of the same. Arg I just want our listeners to realize that many of the same arguments that we're having today were ha were being had mm -hmm. uh, a generation or two ago. Right. And that nobody's any clo I we're I mean, we may be a little closer to getting answers. Right. Right. But uh, but I guess we're really getting off the subject here of, of that uh, the shuttle the shuttle existed existed for a reason and right. that even though it might not have fulfilled its promise it. Mm -hmm. Continued, and then why did the shuttle leave? Uh, the shuttle probably never was intended to be an indefinite program, or even last as long as it did. But it, sure, it surely okay. did. I think Columbia, uh, the Columbia disaster in '03, finally forced the That's subject. Much, uh, yeah, but they, but at, that was after uh, they, space they station. Them. Space station was launched, yes, at, yeah. and that. And we appreciate space, that. Well, space, International Space Station probably wouldn't have happened had the Cold War not That's ended. Right. And that the under the Clinton administration, under Dan Golden, they the NASA realized there's an opportunity to try to bring in the Russians as a as a partner, give them uh, something to work with us. Noble again, noble ideas. And mm -hmm. but to the Russians' credit, they they delivered. The core of the of the station was lifted, um, and the Russians uh, still provide access to the station as they do. as it's so been, use as as the as a, rides. <laughs> Until SpaceX, well, SpaceX, get their stuff they, they demoed their they're vehicle. The they demoed their vehicle. They're they're on their way. Uh, Boeing shouldn't be too much further behind. Right. I don't know where they're at their launch schedule, but uh, so launching people is going to be back on American soil, folks, pretty soon. Stand by. Uh, question. Um, well, actually, not question. I said I was going to be corny for a second. Sure. Back to the uh, the idea of reusable rockets when you said that reusable rockets has the idea has been around for a long time well sure. it has been you know people that know me my girlfriend particularly because she has to deal with me watching old movies from the 1950s and crazy stuff like that you know the little silver rockets they take off I, of right. course they don't the science back then it was vertical <laughs> it no, was just out of there. But the concept yeah, vertical was there up and landing. And landing. Yeah, a lot of right. those ships back in on in those movies back in the back that day that that's where the concept is from. But um, yeah, of course, the technology to actually make it happen uh, has just arrived with the uh, you know with the advent of uh, SpaceX. I need to correct you again on that. Oh, nice. I, okay, there you go. <laughs> going what back, do I know? Right? <laughs> um, no, going back, going back to McDonnell Douglas in the, nice. in, the in the latter in the late part of McDonnell Douglas uh -huh. before their takeover by Boeing. Right. Uh, they had the DCX. The DCX. That's right. The, is that a test? That uh, was a test. That was intended as a test bed. Right. Yeah, that's that right. vertical take, vertical takeoff and landing. landing. Single DCOL. You know, at, at the late '90s, it was the big subject was single stage to orbit. Was trying right. to get the structural fraction of your rocket down to the point where single stage to orbit was possible to to avoid throwing away uh, yeah, throwing the, away a booster. The booster. Yeah. First but, stage, by the way, is yeah. the one that they, they, I mean, they're 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 probably they're, second stage. I, I don't want again. I, I don't want to steal the thunder of, of what happened in 2015 when when SpaceX successfully after several attempts. Oh yeah. One one of the things you have to give awesome. one of the credit you have to give to SpaceX is their tenacity. Indeed. Is that they they're willing to take on some hard some hard subjects mm -hmm. and they're willing to put resources behind it to try to make them successful or at least try. Many for profit companies uh, have difficulty in doing that. They have shareholders, they have they size up risk and, yeah. and there's and there's a reason why many other companies have not uh, gone down that path just because they 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 want to remain profitable. The shareholders get very upset when when they're not showing a profit every quarter. But right. but some companies operate differently. Some are pro some are entirely private, and they and they can have that freedom. Of, they can have that freedom of movement. Right. Um, so and freedom to take risks. Right. Right. So um, because like I said, that the, this show uh, 
we had to make the show a, a short one uh, because one of our guys, uh, uh, Richard Garcia, he, he came down with something. And we've got a lot more stuff lined up for the future. So, I, you know, I really hope we're able to, you know, to get some uh, listeners in here uh, that are really interested in science and uh, rocket technology. So, with that said, uh, you can catch us on rockettalkradio.com. Uh, you can also go on to the RRS and see what the RRS is doing, which is the Reaction Research Society, which is, uh, you know, Dave and I are both a member of, rs.org, uh, and it's rockettalkradio.com. And on, on April 27th, we will be having a symposium. Dave, you want to tell them about, about that? Certainly. Uh, the 2019, uh, April 27th of 2019, this wow. year, in about less than a month uh, away of the Reaction Research Society will be having a public event at the Ken Nakaoka Community Center in Gardena. Uh, you can see all these details on rs.org. Uh, the symposium will be a, a group of speakers throughout the day. We'll start at about 845, run until 5. Uh, we'll have exhibitors. Uh, listed speakers include universities uh, such right. as UCLA, USC, uh, Cal Poly, Pomona will be there. That's right. Also, uh, We'll have the U.S. Air Force, the Space and Missile Command, uh, super fun. as as LA Air Base is just across the 405 from Gardena. Yeah, um, they're they're great. Uh, they they actually have a, a great uh, public relations group. They do a lot of work with kids, uh, educational programs, the same as the RRS we do. Um, we'll also have uh, Northrop Grumman. Uh, Jackie, 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 yeah, Jackie Calvinac will come out again. Uh, we were hoping to have NASA, NASA Goddard, call in. I don't think we will this time. Uh, last year's symposium in 2018 at our 75th anniversary. Uh, it's our 76th anniversary, but nobody really cares about that, that <laughs> round number. We're not uh, yeah, well, yeah. Ish. Ish. We'll go ahead. <laughs> but, but we're still we're still a young organization. Indeed. You know, we, we, yeah. we still continue, and, and the, the industry has grown around us. And oh, so yeah. the, the RRS has had a lot, a lot. Not all of us are professionals. Some of us are. Some of us are just passionate. Uh, amateurs and we try to encourage uh, builders and uh, people who are just passionate about space and rocketry to join us and the R uh, the symposium is a great way to kind of meet uh, the RS not, not only members but also some of the groups that we've we work with LAPD will yeah, be there indeed, yeah. uh, we also we hope to have the really cool guys. the California State Fire Marshal's office oh, yeah. which is in the state of California oh, Ro cool amateur too. rocketry is governed by uh, the fire marshal's office, as it usually is in most states. However, every state of the union uh, has its own rules. Right. Um, but we we actually have a very good relationship uh, with the fire marshal's office, as California has always historically supported uh, amateurs, as long as we're as long as we're safe and we stay within uh, what's reasonable. As we you know we launch in the desert, uh, we. We, you know. Try not to lose any fingers, people, <laughs> legs, we, you know, that sort of it, stuff. It is day. It is go day. through my uh, yes. go through my account, you'll see some explosions and stuff flying well, and all kinds of fun we, stuff. We, <laughs> we also launch a fair number of rockets correctly. I, right. I don't know. <laughs> hey, yeah. the ones that explode, that's where we learn. We learn what went wrong and then we, we the next build we, we solved that problem. The RS works hard to there make sure go. that doesn't happen in the first place. The first place. It's we're getting flushed. Well, no, we're up here. We're, I it. don't want our audience <laughs> to get the impression that we're a bunch of I'm, nuts. No, 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 no. Uh, we're not. We're not. Uh, yeah. Very, uh, uh, how should I say, um, knowledgeable. Uh, we, these, knowledge, these, is, knowledge is meant to be knowledge is meant to be shared, and indeed. and not every uh, not all knowledge belongs with one person, and it shouldn't be. It should be shared. That's the explosions what are just for fun, right? No, you, you, <laughs> I, I think you're getting the wrong message out of our events, but don't worry. <laughs> so uh, yeah. thanks again for joining us, and we will see you the next time on uh, episode four of Rocket Talk Radio, and we will hopefully be discussing some more of uh, the life and times of Robert Truax. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.